my name is Cameron Council. I am a research fellow through the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. And on this very busy day here in Gettysburg, I'm here to talk to you about the Henry Stahl and Penelope Cannon story. of the old Gettysburg compiler office, which used to be the Democratic newspaper here in the town of Gettysburg. Leading up to the Civil War, political parties were facing major divides, and many of those fractures were because of the growing question as to whether slavery should be allowed in the U.S. territories that weren't officially states. The Republican Party, which came out of the crumbling Whig Party, supported an anti-slavery position. The Democrats, on the other hand, couldn't quite come to a consensus over this issue, and so they were split into two fractions, both North and South. These divisions came to a head with the election of 1860, where there were four main candidates all competing for the presidency. While Abraham Lincoln did win in Pennsylvania, all of the counties within the state were not unanimous, meaning that there were still political debates and tensions in Pennsylvania even after the succession of the southern states and the outbreak of the Civil War. In particular, in Adams County, where Gettysburg is located, the Adams Sentinel and the Gettysburg Compiler represented the divides between Republicans and Democrats. The Democratic Gettysburg Compiler was heavily against the election of Lincoln. Shortly after his election, in a December 3rd paper, they write, The poor men who are cajoled into voting for Lincoln under the promise of better times can now see the injury that they have been led to inflict upon themselves and upon the country. So as you can see, situations were already tense even before the battle came thundering through this small town. To anyone walking along this street of Baltimore Street, you might not notice, but there is actually a cannon buried in the ground in front of this building. This cannon used to be fired on the streets of Gettysburg in order to celebrate Democratic elections. It was fondly named Penelope. However, an overcharge of powder in her barrel caused the barrel to rupture in 1855. So, after, because this was such a beloved political canon, it was then buried in front of the Gettysburg Compiler newspaper office. Later on, during the Battle of Gettysburg and its aftermath, this canon came to symbolize something else. Now, in this building behind me worked a man named Henry J. Stahl. During the battle, Stahl arranged for a Confederate doctor to come help a wounded Lieutenant Colonel William Dudley of the 19th Indiana Volunteers. The 19th Indiana Volunteers were a part of the famous Iron Brigade here at Gettysburg. So in short, Dudley was not just a nameless soldier, he was a big deal. During the fighting, Dudley was seriously injured in his leg, and so he had to take refuge in Stahl's house. Since Dudley was such a big figure, not only with his men, but also a part of the Iron Brigade, his injury and his leg amputation gained a lot of attention even after the fighting at Gettysburg. The day after fighting on July 4th, 1863, Henry J. Stahl was imprisoned and taken away to Fort McHenry in Baltimore only for a week. He was accused of treason because a Democratic Stahl pointed out the location of Union soldiers, specifically Lieutenant Colonel Dudley, to the Confederates. The main perpetrator in this argument was a Republican, David McConaughey. McConaughey was a big name in Gettysburg since he came from one of the oldest families in the county. He also studied law under the abolitionist Thaddeus Stevens. During the war, he also got together a group of civilian scouts that were made up of his law clients. However, most importantly, he was an avid supporter of Abraham Lincoln in the election, 
which strictly went against Stahl's beliefs. The Lancaster Intelligener writes that there was one man whom he especially hated and whom he had it in his heart to ruin, provided it could be done without danger to himself. H.J. Stahl, the editor of the compiler, a sound democratic paper, was the special object of McConaughey's aversion. The story about Stahl, who pointed out Union soldiers to Confederates, was corroborated by neighbors who lived right down this street. Francis Bueller, who lived a few doors down, said that about four o'clock that afternoon, while looking out the latticed window shutters of the story window, I overheard a conversation between a rebel lieutenant colonel and a citizen whom I afterwards recognized as Henry J. Stahl of Gettysburg. However, after his release, Stahl was forced back to Fort McHenry in late July 1863 by General Morris. Nonetheless, Stahl was permanently released before August. Upon his return to Gettysburg, the Erie Observer, when regarding Stahl's arrest and the scandal, said, We trust Mr. Stahl will not let the matter drop here. Stahl took it upon himself to gather evidence and post in his newspaper in order to defend himself. He wanted to prove his innocence, so he started with the main perpetrator. In a newspaper article, he wrote, We suspected that some fiendish political opponent was at the bottom of it, and we could afford to suffer more yet in order to discover him, and hoped General Morris had now evidence enough to enable us to place our finger upon the very man. We asked him why he ordered our return. He replied, A letter from Gettysburg. We asked to see it, and it was produced. There it was, in the handwriting of and signed by D. McConaughey that he was simply carrying out an act of humanity and that this whole affair was political malice distorted into treasonable crime. Even after his death in 1892, the compiler still published newspaper articles that defended Stahl. When now General Dudley visited Gettysburg in 1901, the compiler made sure to include in an article about Dudley's experiences during the battle that, quote, he was brought to town and his stretcher bearers found their way into the residence of H.J. Stahl, where they were made welcome and every possible attention given to the wounded officer. Even years later, in 1908, the Gettysburg compiler was still publishing articles in order to defend Stahl's innocence. They even published one that recounted General Dudley's experiences during the battle. It says, realizing that his leg was badly shattered, General Dudley advised that his leg be cut off above the foot. To secure help for General Dudley, Henry J. Stahl left his home on an errand, and this errand of mercy for General Dudley was interpreted by Mr. Stahl's enemies as some act of disloyalty, and he was arrested. So, by looking at both these quotations from Stahl and the Gettysburg compiler, they obviously thought that Stahl had good intentions and was just merely trying to help a wounded officer. According to Stahl, his imprisonment was based on political rivalries between Republicans and Democrats. McConaughey had always disliked Stahl and the Gettysburg compiler, and so Stahl believed that this was McConaughey's chance to ruin his political opponent. So, although Stahl was not brought to court, his reputation had still been damaged. He was seen as the voice of the Democratic Party in town here in Gettysburg, and so he couldn't be seen as untrustworthy. Stahl also had to defend the validity of his party because, as shown by the 1860 election, all of Pennsylvania was not clear-cut Democrats or Republicans. Stahl wanted to do everything in his power to mend this stain that had been placed upon his career and reputation. And so he published numerous newspapers, and even after his death, people were still talking about Stahl and trying to prove his innocence in this whole affair. Now, back to the Penelope Cannon. On battlefields all across the country, and even here at Gettysburg, cannons, whether real or replicas, are set up to show visitors where men fought and defended their positions. fight against his political adversaries and also bigger themes of political discourse in the American Civil War.